Hello, my name is Nob and I will be presenting my senior design project, a real-time interactive WebGL renderer. The motivation comes from the technology of WebGL. With this new platform, I am interested in bringing advanced rendering techniques to the web such that it is immediately accessible to anyone with a browser. I also want it to be lightweight and fast enough that the rendering is done in real time. There are several related works on the internet. The first one on the left is a WebGL path tracer and the one on the right is a simple photon mapping. Since the focus is performance, my approach is to use what's called a fast visualization of the photon map. The heavy rendering work is uploaded to the hardware. The framework is written in JavaScript, WebGL, GLSL. I also use 3.js, which is a popular WebGL library that pro provides many helpful 3D related classes. Here's a diagram of my rendering pipeline. First, on the CPU side, I have an object scene and a camera, which is controlled by the user. The scene is then used to compute photon map, and from what we get a list of photon position, color, and incident angles. The scene information and the photon information are both sent down to the shader to perform rendering by ray tracing and computing radiance estimates. From this, we get a final output color, which is finally rendered onto a rectangular plane which acts as a screen. This plane is another simple viewing scene with a fixed orthogonal camera, and this is what we actually see. Now I will walk through the steps in greater detail. First, I set up the initial rendering framework with simple ray tracing on a shader. Here is a rendered image from the framework. It has a decent performance of 30 FPS. The code is now live and can be seen. The next step is photon scattering. Photons are emitted from a single point light source in the uniform random directions. Using the fast visualization method, the outgoing instead of incoming power is stored at the surface. This allows for both direct and indirect illumination to be computed from the photon map. In addition, Russian roulette optimization is used, scaling the number of reflected photons. Photons are stored at the surface of each object per object. This is done through partitioning the global photon array into sections associated with each object. The data is then passed down to the shader as a texture. Once photons are stored, they are ready to be looked up at render time. The output color is computed through obtaining a radiance estimate, which is done by summing up the power of nearby photons on a surface. Filtering is used to improve the results of radiance estimates, giving more weight to the photons that are closer to target location. Gaussian filtering is chosen for a smooth blended results. It has a gradual drop off instead of the hard cutoff of cone filtering. When compared, Gaussian filtering produces much nicer results with many fewer photons. Because photons are stored per object, the technique eliminates unwanted bleeding from nearby surfaces. In addition, there is also no need for an acceleration structure because 1. Radiance estimate simply includes all photons on the surface and 2. The number of photons per surface is already small enough. To improve results, I added ray trace shadows. And finally, I added mirror reflection and refraction as seen here on a glass ball. Here is the final result. For future improvements, I first want to optimize the shader-based rendering, since there are still a lot of room for improvement. With optimization, I can support more photons and subsequently more effects such as soft shadows and caustics. Finally, a large area of exploration would be to do dynamic photon scattering. This would have to be done on WebCL and passed to WebGL through the interop. This is an overview of my senior design project. The finished renderer can be viewed at imnop.com/webgl. Thank you for listening.